All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to access your laptop or computer inside a firewall from the internet. So we're going to use something called dynamic DNS along with port forwarding in the router and some other types of configuration to set up your remote desktop. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Google and just search for the Dynew. Uh, Dynew provides free dynamic DNS service. So we we'll go ahead and first create an account with Dynew. Um, so as you can see, it's free. Um, and you can read about it if you like. But dynamic DNS is basically a technology that points your a domain name to your stat, uh, static or dynamic IP address at all times. They have two types of dynamic DNS service, one for the top level domain. So if you already have a domain name, you can use their free dynamic DNS. If you want to buy a domain name, you can. Uh, I'm, we're going to go for this third level domain name, which is free. So let's click continue. Um, they just put your name or whatever you want to put over there. There's two types. So you can choose dynamic.com or net, doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to go with Alex Baker gonna create a user just put your information in here as best as you can uh, the only thing to remember here is that your email address uh, you should probably put a valid email address just because if you lose your password or you forget it if you have the email ad address in there you can retrieve it back otherwise you won't be able to get access back to that uh, domain name so go ahead and fill this out uh, as best as you can there are seven steps and this is the first step um, so let's fill this out and then move on to the next step here once this is done we will have a domain name called Alex Baker dot dynu.com using this domain name we should be able to access the IP address of my internal network here at home so just click continue um, and it's all free there's nothing to be paid or it's not a trial or anything it's completely free there's no advertisements of anything of that sort next we're gonna go into this control panel just to take a look at what's in there um, there's some features in there that may be useful so I'm going to go ahead and log in with the email and password that I signed in with. Uh, as soon as we log in, we see there's a few things here. And the third level dynamic DNS service is the one that we are registered, alexbaker.dynu.com. And let's see, we're going to go to general settings in here. And you can see there are many domain names that you can use to access your account. I mean, access your IP address. Um, alexbaker.dynu.com, www.ftp, mail, and so on. That's your primary IP address. It automatically finds it and puts it in there. MX record is like for your mail if you plan on receiving mail for it. And here's the feature email notification. If you check it, it will actually let you send you an email when your e uh, IP address changes. Yeah, Just click Save. Um, and then we're just going to go back here. Um, it shows you all of the information here. We're going to download uh, a client software and keep it running on the computer so that it keeps our domain name mapped to the dynamic IP address. So this uh, software is free once again. You just download it. And after it finishes downloading, we have to install it. It's a very lightweight software. And this software actually, once you configure it, you can just leave it... Uh, you don't even have to start it up because it runs as a system service and it updates your IP address automatically if it changes. So it's just a one-time step that you need to do to download and install it on your computer. The software is, uh, once again, it has it's completely freeware. It has no ads or malware or adware or nothing of that sort. So when we finish this step and when we configure this software, what we have accomplished so far is that our domain name, alexbaker.dynu.com, will always stay mapped to the IP address of this computer. 
so if the IP address changes uh, for some reason it changes it doesn't matter the software will keep track of it and make sure this uh, domain name points to this the network here so uh, that gives us the convenience to access the network with a, with a name we can remember easily and not having to use IP address which is very difficult to remember it's gonna do a quick install here um, bear with me here alright so while it's finishing up um, that's step 3 completed we're gonna go ahead and put the domain name in here one time it's a, like I said it's only a one time thing so just click OK um, now we have to go into the domain tab and put the domain name Alex Baker or whatever is the domain you have to choose dyni.com or dyni.net or whatever else put the password and make sure to click the save button after you click the save button it's done um, now it will keep track of your IP address based on this domain name just click OK it does run in the tray icon but even if you close it if you exit out of it doesn't matter it will still keep track of your domain name because it runs as a system service like I told you alright we're gonna enable remote desktop on this computer so just right click my computer properties uh, and then on the left side you see remote settings uh, click that and what we are going to do is enable remote desktop connections to this computer now it doesn't mean that anyone can connect to this computer even if you enable it you still need to have a valid username and password to connect to this computer so it's not like anyone can just get in there and connect it if your system doesn't have a username and password it just won't let anyone connect so it's pretty secure in some ways next we're gonna go to Windows firewall and we're gonna open port 3389 or remote desktop port uh, because the firewall basically blocks any inbound traffic so we have to open this port so people can act you can actually access your desktop through remote uh, remote desktop protocol so we just click the advanced settings uh, when you go into advanced settings just to let you know uh, the system is smart enough to already create uh, a port inbound rule for it uh, it usually does it automatically when you enable remote desktop but we are going to go ahead and double double confirm it out here so just scroll down to remote desktop and there you go you see TCP in remote desktop user mode it says yes now if it doesn't say yes you can right click it and you can enable it and if you don't find this rule at all you can create a new rule by clicking a new rule port so in this case remote desktop runs on port 3389 it's TCP so just type 3389 now you don't have to do this if the rule is already there if it's not there allow connection next and then you can put uh, put some kind of an you can let it uh, you have to make sure that it's all enabled so you can access it from the internet put the name like RDP or remote desktop protocol whatever you like and click finish I'm not gonna do it because the rules are already in here uh, by default in uh, Windows 8 when I enabled it so that's done now our computer will allow people to access it from from outside on the, on the network now we have a very important step to do and that is configure port forwarding in the router that I have here so I'm gonna go to the router uh, website to manage it so in my case the router is at 192.168.11 I'm gonna go in here and log in um, if you don't uh, if you don't know the password of your router just look under the router like physically and maybe the password is gonna be in there just go into the every router is different but in my routers case I have this NAT section and it says port translation but you need to find the place where it has uh, port forwarding and then you type the name is RDP protocol is TCP is port 3389 and then we need to forward it to the IP address internal IP of this computer which we can find by typing IP config so you just type IP config in uh, 
DOS command and you can see the IP address is 192.168.164 so I'm going to put here 192.168.164 and the destination is also 3389 uh, and I'm going to enable it so now whatever traffic is received on the router for port 3389 it's going to forward it to port 3389 of this computer yeah so that way RDP is accessible from the internet well uh, yeah going ahead we are gonna do a quick check as you can see uh, this is a port check we're gonna do go to the port check just to make sure to test is it is this port forwarding set up correctly you go on die new website and go to the tools port check make sure it's your IP address it automatically puts it in there put port 3389 check it out see what result you get if it says success it means this port is open and it is configured correctly alright that's what it means now there is really no way to test this completely but you can go to remote you can find remote desktop connection um, you can open it and then you can try to connect to it but here's the here's a catch if you try to connect to your domain name from here it won't work and the reason is the domain name points to the IP address of the router and that's an external IP address the router doesn't allow bounce back traffic so even if you click connect it won't it won't the router will just take it it's a security measure in all routers so never try to access your computer using your external IP address when you're inside your network it's just not gonna work yeah so uh, if this test doesn't work don't worry about it so it doesn't mean it's not working from outside it's just not working from inside your network so that's it once it says it's successful the only way to test it is now you go to work or you go to your friend's house or something and then you want to access your computer open up your remote desktop uh, window there put your domain name click connect as long as you know your username and password you should be able to connect and that should be it so that's it uh, this is how you set up remote desktop using your domain name dynamic DNS domain name 